In Space Watch, we are following a historic SpaceX mission. The Crew Dragon capsule launched to orbit Saturday and docked at the International Space Station early Sunday, all without a pilot. The flight is a big step for NASA. It wants to send U.S. astronauts to space without relying on Russian transport, which it's been doing since the space shuttle retired in 2011. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us from the Kennedy Space Center in Merritt Island, Florida. Bill, welcome. This is exciting. Um, before we get into the mission's accomplishments so far, take us through what needs to happen before Friday to call this trip a total success. Well, you hit the nail on the head. You know, there's really three phases that are vital here to SpaceX and NASA. You had to have a good launch. You got to get the spacecraft to the space station. They've accomplished those two things. And then, as you said, on Friday, the spacecraft is going to undock from the space station. It's going to fire its engine to slow down fall back into the atmosphere. This will be a hypersonic reentry, very fast, very hot. And then it'll splash down under parachutes in the Atlantic Ocean east of Cape Canaveral. So how all that plays out and works in reality as opposed to in a computer model, that's the goal here to find out and make sure it all works before you put astronauts on board. Amazing. And Bill, give us a broader sense, if you will, of the significance of this mission and what it means for the future of space travel, not to mention, I would, I would think, a little American pride. I mean, who wants to rely on the Russians to get to space, right? Well, absolutely. You know, and if you think about it, this is the first human-rated spacecraft uh, to be designed from scratch in the U.S. since the space shuttle back in the 70s. Uh, so it's really a, a, a big step for NASA to be able to restore this lost capability. You're absolutely right. You know, the old saying in the space biz is that, you know, superpowers are the only people who can conduct human spaceflight. And now we've got that plus, you know, the added edge of private companies doing it for profit. Uh, so I think it's very significant. It has potentially major uh, potential impacts downstream, not only for NASA, but for, pro for the private sector beginning to to work in low Earth orbit and beyond. That's NASA's goal. They want to be one customer, but they're hoping there'll be other customers who will hire these spacecraft to help people move out into space. Absolutely. Now, you write in your article for CBSNews.com that the docking at the International Space Station was flawless. What made it so perfect? And remember, layman's audience, if you will, but maybe walk us through why it was so great. Well, you know, it's like they say about getting to Carnegie Hall. The secret is practice, practice, practice. You know, they simulated this in computers so many times, you know, it's unimaginable. But you've got a body like the space station moving through space at nearly five miles per second, 17,000 miles an hour. This spacecraft has to catch up and very, very carefully nose in for a docking uh, without having a collision or causing some other problem. So it requires very sophisticated computer software, uh, the sensors it uses for navigation. And of course, they thought it would all work, but again, until you do it in reality, you don't know for sure. And when they did this, it went off without a hitch. I mean, they must be vastly relieved at both SpaceX and at NASA that it went as smoothly as it did. Absolutely. Now, after the docking was completed, SpaceX founder Elon Musk spoke about the setbacks his company faced leading up to this historic milestone. How far has SpaceX come? And does this success give SpaceX the edge over other commercial spacecraft companies, do you think? Well, they've certainly got an edge so far because they've been launching commercial spacecraft now for several years. Their Dragon cargo ship has made more than 15 flights to the International Space Station. Uh, and, of course, they're launching for commercial customers as well. Uh, so they're certainly in a good position, I think. But you can't forget uh, the Boeing company, which has vast experience in space flight and aviation. They're also building a human-rated spacecraft. Its first test flight is planned toward the end of April. And they hope to put astronauts on board it in the in the August September time frame. Uh, so if all goes well by the end of the year, there will be two companies in America that are both carrying people uh, to low Earth orbit. Uh, and so that's that's a I'd say they both have an edge right now. But NASA is hoping even more companies get involved down the road. I, I want to drill down a little bit more in this uh, in this privatization of space because uh, you know as you said, just like SpaceX, Boeing has also poured billions of dollars into bringing American astronauts into space. And NASA does seem to be relying more and more on independent companies and their resources. How significant do you think these companies will be in the future of space exploration going forward? Oh, I think tremendously. You know, NASA's big goal now is to um, put a small space station in orbit around the moon. They're hoping to be able to have astronauts on the moon by the middle of the, of the 2020s. And of course, they're looking at all of that as kind of dress rehearsal 
uh, technology development before you send people to Mars uh, sometime further on. All of those spacecraft will be built by the private sector, and that's always been the case. NASA has never built its own spacecraft, but in the past, they were completely in charge. You know, they helped with the design, they, they funded it, they had final say on everything. The, this new model is relying on these private companies to build and execute these spacecraft. NASA simply wants to hire them uh, to carry their astronauts to space. So it's a different way of doing business, puts more responsibility on the private sector. Uh, but again, that's all intentional. They want the private sector to move out into space. And NASA, if you think about it like that, would just be a, an anchor tenant, if right. you will, buying the service. And there really is no power struggle behind the scenes, Bill? <laughs> well, you know, NASA has these competitions to decide who they're going to give contracts to. And there's certainly been competition in the past. And there is internally, I think, today. I mean, each company wants to succeed. Uh, but if the schedule holds up right now, SpaceX is going to be the first uh, to launch astronauts, followed very closely by Boeing. Uh, and then down the road, we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. It's just too early to say who wins that race in the long term. And how long until American astronauts are going to be headed up in a, a SpaceX capsule? Well, in, in July is the current hope. If this current flight goes well, and they have some big tests between now and then they've got to get through, but if all of that goes well, they're hoping to be able to launch two astronauts sometime in July, uh, again, if all goes well. Very exciting. Bill Harwood, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.